So my first question will be, well, what have you been up to since the last time we spoke? Uh, yeah, uh, a couple of things. Since the last time we spoke, I, uh, I worked on X Factor, and, um, and then right after that, literally two days after I finished doing the boot camp section of X Factor, I started uh, preparing myself and getting ready to go to Cape Town, South Africa to film a Warner Brothers movie, uh, the fifth installment of House Party. Wow. And what was that experience like? I have to be very honest. It was definitely life-changing for me. Um, just going back, you know, going to the motherland was amazing. My first step into the land, it was very emotional for me. Mm -hmm. felt like I was coming back home. Mm -hmm. um, and then being able to work in South Africa where once, you know, people of color weren't allowed to do anything. And now these young people have the opportunity after the partake to uh, uh, partake in such a, a, a you know a, a thing like doing a movie. Yes. You know, for Warner Brothers, like, and you're talking about, you know, these kids' parents at one point didn't have the right to do anything because of the partake that was happening um, in, uh, in the 80s and or very early 90s. Mm -hmm. So you know, I learned a lot. Um, and uh, it definitely it was it was a great experience for me overall. Did you get a chance to interact with um, the people that were over there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I even got a chance to go to Robin Island where Nelson Mandela was jailed. Mm -hmm. um, he was in prison there for 17 years. He was in prison for a total of 27 years, but he was in Johannesburg first. Then they shipped him to Cape Town. Um, and this off island called Robin Island. Um, so I got to talk to some of the ex prisoners that were um, that was there, and they actually gave us a tour about you know the whole history of the apartheid. And you know I, I actually learned how to pronounce it. I used to pronounce it apartheid, and um, they said that just think of hate, and that's how you remember apartheid. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I got to speak to a lot of people. Plus, I hired 19 dancers, and all of them were local dancers. So I was with locals every day. Wow. What is the dance scene like over there? What is, what is their dance culture like over there? You know what? Very much so like ours. Wow. I, you know, I didn't know, you know, what to expect. But they're very much so like us. And, you know, with, the, with YouTube being available to them and, and television, you know, they... They've learned to train themselves, and also they've learned to, you know, understand that, you know, uh, training is very important. And, you know, they also um, hire local uh, Hollywood choreographers to fly out to South Africa to teach workshops. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, and they also take the initiative for themselves to fly out. They fly, a lot of them fly out. Like, I must say, I'm, God, I, I met so many of them that... They either they fly themselves to New York or Los Angeles, you know, for weeks at a time, sometimes months at a time, just to train, and then go back to Africa and uh, teach them everything they've learned here. Wow, that's amazing. Seeing as that you got, seeing as that they brought you out there, you know, being the great dancer and choreographer that you are, and you know, you you hired dancers. Is this an indication that this installment of House Party will be returning to the dancing roots, kind of like the first and the second one? Yeah, it's definitely, uh, actually, it's definitely an upgrade. I'm going to be honest with you, from okay. the first or second one. Okay. Uh, House Party is not really a dance film. Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, Stomp the Yard or Step Up Revolution or any of the other past movies that I've done, but um, it just has a couple of dance elements in it. There's one battle scene where... Uh, the two lead girls go up against the two lead guys mm -hmm. in, uh, in the, actually in the house they, they battle and then later on there's a DJ there's a DJ battle that goes on two DJs compete against each other and, and in the midst of that you know that's where my 19 dancers come in and I did this whole huge uh, dance choreography section while they were battling back and forth um, and one of the DJs was considered old school DJ so most of his music was old school beats Mm -hmm. And then the other one's very, you know, um, dubstep, very new step, you know, new style. So it was the combination of both of those styles of music, and I choreographed to that. And it turned out to be a three-minute uh, routine, which was amazing. It was fun. It was great. 
the dancers enjoyed it, directed, producers, everyone, you know, said it was great. So, I mean, it was a good experience for everybody, not only for myself, but for everyone else. Do you have um, any clue why they chose Africa? Do you know why they decided to, to shoot it there? Absolutely, I know why. Um, it's very, it's way cheaper. Uh-huh. Way cheaper. Our dollar goes uh, a long way over there. Um, you know, the, the movie, uh, I think it was a $3.9 million budget movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were able to do hire local actors. I mean, they hired a lot of LA actors, so don't get me wrong. They hired see, one, two, three, I'm going to say about five or six local uh, actors from here. And then the rest of the actors they hired from over there. Wow, that's so, um, so, so they're bringing business over there, too. Yeah. Yeah, but well, you know what? When you do a Screen Actors Guild movie, by law, wherever you film, you have to hire a certain amount of locals anyway. Okay. Yeah, and, um, you know, they, they, they have the RAND, which is their currency, and our dollar, like, is worth, way, it's worth a lot of money. Like, for every one dollar, it's like, Eight point seven or eight point nine of their rand. Wow. So, so our dollar goes a very long way. So they were able to do a lot of stuff, um, and even with um, flying us all out there first class and putting us up and having to give us per diem, it was still way cheaper to film over there than over here. Do you think Hollywood will be doing that a lot more often? Oh yeah. Hmm. This, this is not the first film that they've done uh, done in Cape Town. Okay. They have a um, a studio out there called Film Africa. Wow. Okay. And um, Film Africa has been filming films there forever. Um, and, you know, now it's becoming even more and more and more popular. And um, a lot of people are filming out there, a lot. This is just the very first time that they filmed anything that was dance-related. It had a little bit of dance in it, so. How long were you out there for? I was out there for exactly, I think it was almost six weeks, five wow. and a half weeks. Okay, so did it did it hit you while you were there, or when you came back home? Like, wow, I just I just came from Africa. I was I'm in Africa. It hit me when I got there. Wow. The moment that I got there, and I stepped foot on their soil, I felt I can't believe I'm here. This is Africa, like you know. And and it was it was great because you know though I worked, but I also had a lot of leisure time, and and I went to the safari and. Uh, now I went to Table Mountain, which is one of the seven wonders over there in Cape Town. And, mm-hmm. you know, I got to do a little bit of everything. I even went to some of their local clubs, you know, with, with locals. Um, I did the tour thing. I mean, I, you name it, I did pretty much everything that I could possibly do as a tourist. Wow. That's great, man. I'm happy that you got a chance to experience that. Yeah, it was, it was quite, quite, quite an amazing experience. Now, with, a, with an experience like that, and you know, here it is. You can go there, and of course, you you know, you got your own camera and stuff like that. Do you feel that it's important for for dancers to have press to talk about those types of experiences that they may encounter, whether it be Africa or the UK or you know, Japan and China, just the different things that dancers and choreographers can get exposed to themselves? Do you feel that there's a need for people like us and just press in general? for the dance industry to, to document and talk about the great things you guys are doing in your travels? Oh, yeah, I think it's very important. I think that everybody needs to understand and and, uh, and not be ignorant of the fact. Uh, I mean, because you know how many people have asked me, oh, when you was in Africa, did you see, did you come across, you know, lions? Was there, like, giraffes running through the streets? And I'm like, okay, that's so ignorant. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they need to know that, um, like, a city like Cape Town, um, is very much so like L.A., mm-hmm. you know? They have mountains and palm trees and beaches, lots of buildings. It's very city. Um, so not only do people need to know about, you know, the actual location, but also that the people are just the same, just like we are. You know, everyone is there, uh, you know, the same struggle. Everybody wants to make it. Everybody wants to help their families. Everybody wants to be someone. Some, everyone wants to, to better themselves. Um, and they they also need to know that L.A. is not the only place that um, that have talent. Yes. You know, there's a lot of talented people out there in South Africa, extremely talented. And, um, like, the act, every, everyone from the actors to 
the camera people and producers to to your dancers. Like I, I was very impressed with everybody there, and they're truly grateful and they don't take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've no, I've noticed that within our travels as well too. You know, everybody always appreciates it more. That's not from here, as far as the dance culture anyway. They appreciate it a lot more. Oh yeah, I mean, they totally gave me red carpet superstar status, you know, treatment. Everywhere I went, you know, um, everything from having a three bedroom, three bath condo hotel to you know, having my own personal driver, to having two personal assistants to, wow. you know, pretty much for whatever I wanted, you know, they gave me. Wow. Like, and, oh, yeah, I don't get that. It's not, not that, you know, I need it all the time, but it's always good to feel, I don't know, it's always good to feel appreciated. Yes, I understand. That's what they made me feel. They made me feel like, wow, you know, you... We're grateful for everything you've done, and we want to treat you. You know, they. in other words, they celebrated me. Yes. Uh, they truly celebrated me, and so to me, that's the true meaning of a celebrity, someone who is celebrated. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the work that they do and for the giving back. And for the work, do. exactly, for the work that they've done and, and, and you know, and uh, the, the lives that, you know, through your work that you have changed, you changed so many lives and you have motivated and, inspired so many young people through the work that you've done mm -hmm. you know um it's it's quite amazing that all the way from over here i'm doing you know just doing me not knowing that i'm touching someone's life mm -hmm. you know way in africa yes and at the moment that they meet me like they're almost in tears because they can't believe that i'm tangible and that i'm real mm -hmm. that i can that i'm human that i'm just like they are yes now, after that experience, you know, when you come back home to the States, do you jump right back into a project, or do you jump into teaching workshop? Like, what do you do, or do you just take a break? You know, I, 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 I'm taking a break right now only because there isn't a job, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, it's not because I want to. Um, I want to work. I want to continue to work up until the year end. Uh, right now, I have a couple of commercials that I'm going to be doing. Um, and one of them doesn't start until like the 6th or 7th of November. So right now, yes, I'm on, I'm on a break, but I'm grateful for it because I've just been going and going and going for, you know, quite a few months in a row. So now I'm just trying to get my life back together here and be a little bit more domestic. And I just bought a house five months ago. So Wow, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So I'm just trying to clean up and, and decorate and, you know, and spend some of that money I made <laughs> into this house. <laughs> All right, um, I'm not going to keep you uh, much longer. I just want to ask you one more question. Um, we're going to be featuring um, uh, a female choreographer by the name of Asa Jones. Now, I know you're familiar with her, and she's familiar with you. We're going to be featuring her, and I just wanted to you know, get your thoughts on, on Asa and the type of person that she is. Um, yes. Uh, what did you need to know just just the type of person that she as far as you know being a woman female choreographer and how that you know how hard it is you know you could speak to how hard it is for women you know to achieve success and you know um, obviously a male dominated industry and for you know a woman to have any type of form of success in the industry you know you know it takes a lot and maybe you you at from a male perspective can speak about that not only just about her but just women in general and what you can see that they have to go through yeah, I, I, I have to agree with everything you said. It's way, way harder for females to make it as choreographers. They're not as respected as males are. And um, for someone like herself to even um, attempt <laughs> and to do what she has done and doing now currently, you know, you know, I, I hand down, I mean, I, I bow to that. Um, very few uh, women you know, make it big, and then even less African Americans do. You know, you have Hyatt, Fatima, you can literally count them in one hand. Like Hyatt, Fatima, I can't even think of another African American choreographer that's made it that big, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like literally a handful of people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know that they go through a lot, you know, I've heard stories, and, um, and you know, this industry, it could be very shady because, 
you know, when you're being hired by certain directors or producers and you're a female, you know, I mean, I'm not, I, I hate to say this, but, you know, a lot of times they want to sleep with them. That's yes. why they get hired. Yes, I understand. And not, if they don't. I'm not saying that they do that, the correctors do that, but, you know, they're approached like that. Yes. Um, and um, once they don't, then it's like, okay, we'll forget you. And that, oh, Lorianne Gibson, that's the other female choreographer that's made it pretty big. Mm-hmm. You know, I knew there was one more, I couldn't remember. But, you know, other than those three female choreographers, like, you know, uh, it's hard. Um, and if you're a minority, it's even harder. So if you're a double minority female and you're African American, it's like almost, you better be 20 times better than a male choreographer. You have to be 20 times better. And I have to say, like, people like Rap City, who I think is an amazing choreographer, mm-hmm. she could agree with me. Like, she's amazing. She's brilliant. She's borderline genius. And she still hasn't gotten to where she needs to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luan from New York City, another one. Yes, amazing. familiar. Uh, brilliant. Genius. Still struggling. Cannot get, get to where she needs to be. So... So there you have it. I mean, that's that's just my outtake on it. You know, mine. No, that's that's good. You know, because again, all these, all these interviews and all of you guys' words are, are they're for the youth. You know, at at some point, you know, as for your peers, you know, you can only do so much and you can only help them so much. But if you can get to the kids at a young age and you can get them this information, I think that is vital. So it helps them maneuver their courses as they're going about pursuing the entertainment industry because they have to know. They have to know if this is what they really want to do, this is what they're going to, you know, have to be ready to encounter. And I just, you know, thank you and everybody else that always takes the time to let us know the truth. Therefore, you're empowering the youth because they have the truth and they'll better know how to pursue, you know, what they want to do as far as dealing with the arts and entertainment. You know, because it's not it's not always pretty. You know, on TV, they always show, you know, the glitz and glamour of the hard work, but they don't necessarily always show the hard work. Right. Right. Yeah. I always say it was when, you know, a lot of choreographers, they come up and you never heard of them. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, this person. And, you know, they're like, oh, my God, this person just came out of nowhere. Overnight success. In reality, it wasn't overnight success. It was like a nine year overnight success. Yeah. You just didn't see it. (laughs) Struggling to get to where they are. Struggling. So if you if you've heard their name, like a Lorianne Gibson, a Hi-Hat, a Fatima, uh, Luang, Rhapsody, if you heard any of those female choreographers' names, you know that they've been at it for years, years, and working hard, extremely hard. Yes. Well, I don't want to uh, take up too much more of your time. I want you to enjoy that brand new house. <laughs> <laughs> No, no problem. Um, thanks again, Chuck. We look forward to um, having you. Do- We're working on the next issue right now. You're currently going to be in that Irish sent over some stuff for us to put in the magazine for you. So you're definitely going to be in that one. And as um, soon as we get that one printed, you know, you guys will have it. And then we can, you know, keep, you know, moving from there. And hopefully one of these um, issues that we can have you on the cover. I would love to. I would love to be on the cover. <laughs> I'm down. No problem, and um, you just enjoy your day, and um, thank you again for your time. I always, you know, enjoy talking to you because you're always not only schooling me as a dancer, but again, you're you're schooling the youth, whether you know it or not. Thank you so much, and that's what it's about being able to give back. Thank you. No problem. You have a good day, sir. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye.